This is Five on Your Side at Five, focused on you. Tonight, police are investigating a shooting at a Metro East bowling alley. It happened after large fights inside the building, caught on video. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Kelly Jackson. I'm Ann Allred. Mike Bush has the day off. Police say fights happened earlier in the evening on Sunday. Then an argument and shots were fired later that night. Police are now trying to figure out if the two incidents are related. It all happened at St. Clair Bowl in Fairview Heights. Five on your side's Diamond Palmer is live at the bowling alley with new information. Diamond. Well, Ann and Kelly, the bowling alley's youth director says he received dozens of phone calls last night and this morning asking if the bowling alley would be open today. Police say they have not made any arrest and they're asking anyone with information to step forward. Bullet holes and broken glass, a reminder of what happened Sunday night at St. Clair Bowl. O'Fallon police say two people got into an altercation. Shots were fired and two bystanders were struck by stray bullets in their legs. Police say the shooters left the bowling alley before they could catch them. An employee believes one of them shot out the back door and escaped. <laughs> Police say hours earlier on Sunday, multiple agencies responded to large fights inside of the bowling alley and in the parking lot. In this video, you can see one woman holding a hammer and dozens of people fighting. Police were on top of another woman trying to restrain her from fighting. We have a lot of leagues here. We have a high school program, junior high program, and um, we want them to come in the building and feel safe. The bowling alley's youth director, Mike Imes, was there with the league just an hour before the chaos. He rushed back to the scene to help. Not even 24 hours later on Monday, the business was back to hosting leagues. This electronic monitor and crew sweeping glass are what bowlers had to walk by. We got some calls last night while we were here and got some calls this morning and said we're we're open. I'm says he and the managing staff at the bowling alley are already brainstorming ways to increase security with an age minimum to enter the facility and even metal detectors if they have to. But it's hard when you don't have a, a situation that's always happening, something you can secure to take care of. When it's random, it's it's kind of tough. So I'm, I'm sure they're going to we'll talk about that and see if there's anything we could have done to prevent what happened. This evening, O'Fallon police say this still is a very active investigation and they are currently conducting interviews as well as listening and looking at video footage trying to identify any witnesses or suspects. Reporting live here in Fairview Heights, Diamond Palmer, 5 on your side. Some developing news tonight out of Phelps County. A mother and her two children are dead after a house fire. It happened late Saturday night on County Road 2120. That's just north of Rolla. The Phelps County Coroner says the victims are Jessica Lynn Sager and her daughters, 14-year-old Cadence and 9-year-old Savannah. Another child, a boy, was able to escape. The father was not home at the time. Crews are investigating what started the fire. A man is dead. A security guard, a security guard heard after a shooting inside a quick trip in South St. Louis. It happened at the station on Gravois near Chippewa just after midnight. Sources tell us they believe the man who died grabbed for the guard's gun. The guard was shot in the thigh. He is in critical condition. Police have not released the name of the man who died. St. Louis police are investigating after shots were fired at an off-duty officer. It happened around 2 this morning in the Tower Grove South neighborhood. Police say the off-duty officer tried to stop a group of juveniles who were trying to steal a car. One of them ran off and fired shots at the officer who fired back. No one was hurt. A 15-year-old is in custody, and police are searching for the other minors involved. Three men accused of holding a woman captive at a South St. Louis church were in court today. Last month, a woman told police the suspects kidnapped, beat, and held her captive in a room at Mount of Olives Ministry. According to court documents, the woman was bound with ropes and only given water. In court today, offense attorneys claimed it's a case of mistaken identity. Now, I have a hard time believing that this case is still under investigation. I've spoken to a ton of people that have not been contacted by law enforcement that are giving me a name of who did this that also lived in the church. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Prosecutors say police body cam video shows the woman identified the three suspects as the men who attacked her. They also say when she was taken to a hospital, she had injuries on her wrists and feet. Today, the suspects were denied bond. It is warm and windy, that weather pattern continuing, but a cold front is bringing in some showers and storms tonight. Let's check in yeah. with weather first meteorologist Jim Castillo. 
Good to see you both. You know, yeah, there's a hundred percent chance of seeing showers and storms in here and limited severe weather, but still isolated severe weather can't be ruled out at 76 right now and a south wind at 17 and you can see all the lightning up to the north. So even watching places like Moberly, Missouri and right along the Iowa, Missouri border and west of Chicago. So nowhere near us at this point, but there's Pike County and then just to the north and west, some new showers and storms popping up around Moberly. Uh, by the way, it's severe weather preparedness week. Have a plan, uh, paperwork and also items like closed told shoes and, and spare keys and phones, battery powered charger, and of course at NOAA Weather Radio, uh, for example, even tonight, if we get some hail or high wind with some of these storms, we're not expecting any tornado chances. So that's some great news about tonight's severe weather, and I'll have much more on that. Time it out for you coming up in just a few minutes. The U.S. Supreme Court has decided former President Donald Trump is staying on the ballot. Courts in Colorado and Illinois and election officials in Maine had tried to bar Trump from their ballots for his role in the January 6th riot. Our political editor Mark Maxwell is here to break it all down. That's right. All nine Supreme Court justices agreed states do not have the power to block a candidate from running for president. The court said states cannot abridge privileges or immunities, deprive persons of life, liberty or property without due process. It did say that states may disqualify persons holding or attempting to hold state office, but that states have no power uh, to do that with, with federal offices, especially the presidency. Even the three liberal justices wrote this, that the court must decide whether Colorado may keep a presidential candidate off the ballot on the ground that he's an oath-breaking insurrectionist. But allowing Colorado to do that would create a chaotic state-by-state -state patchwork at odds with our nation's principles. That means Trump will appear on the ballot in Illinois, Governor J.B. Pritzker said this just before the ruling came out. We're prepared to fight this battle at the ballot box. And you got to remember, we've done this twice before, and we've beaten Donald Trump in Illinois by 16 points in 2016, 17 points in 2020. Uh, he's, you know, in trouble in Illinois. We, we want him on the ballot, frankly, because he's a detriment to Republicans across the United States, but especially in Illinois. Justice Amy Coney Barrett said in her concurrence that the court has settled a politically charged issue in the volatile season of a presidential election. Now it falls to voters to settle the next chapter of Trump's story, a chapter likely to be shaded by prosecutors, judges and jurors. Tomorrow is Super Tuesday. Voters in 15 states will cast their ballots. On the GOP side, Super Tuesday could help Nikki Haley pick up some wins, or it could give former President Trump a huge step towards securing the nomination. More than 800 delegates are at stake. In Illinois, the primary is in about two weeks on Tuesday, March 19th. Early voting is already underway. In Missouri, Trump won the Republican caucuses this Saturday. Democrats can request a mail-in ballot by March 12th. Those have to be returned by March 23rd. That is the same day as in-person voting for the party.